guys, how's it going? Andrew here from Get Into Game Dev. It's a little bit of a subdued day for me today. It's a day for introspection because I'm physically locked inside the house. I mean, here in Bangkok at the moment, the um, air quality is generating volumetric shadows, which is not great. And it's at the point where the vending machine downstairs has run out of coffee and it's just the weird sorts of novelty coffees like Mandarin Americano. It's fair to say I'm at a low point in my character arc. One thing that I've been constantly doing over the lifetime of this channel is refactoring things, re-examining things, very basic things. I feel a sense of injustice when I learn of a new technique which does the same thing but does it faster. I'm thinking, we've got this machine, it's got this beautiful GPU which is probably more powerful than the controllers which sent people to the moon and why are we artificially blocked for performance? This is a long rambling way of me saying that I am going to make a, I'm going to go on a spiritual journey, you could say, with the Vulcan series. I'm going to refactor things. And the thing that I'm going to look at is compute based rasterization. Now, the reason I'm saying this is there's going to be a few steps and I could make a single video which has all of those steps, or I could make a large number of small videos to break it up. But it will be easier if we bear in mind what the end goal is. So the end goal, or the intermediate goal, is to have a mesh. And that mesh is a collection of triangles and dispatch that on a compute shader. And then every thread of that compute shader We'll be working on an individual triangle. First up, just to see what it looks like. I I've heard some good things about it, but secondly, we can do things like not render triangles, which are too small, so you get automatic level of detail. And then the end goal, and I hesitate to say this, but I would be interested to implement something like nanite, like unreal nanite-like technology. And what I mean by that is having some sort of compute shader doing meshlet based culling, and then depending on the size of the meshlets, either dispatching them to, well, there's a few options, dispatching them to, to the traditional hardware pipeline or dispatching them to a compute shader, which runs on a per triangle basis. So it actually the threads of the compute shader are doing what a fragment shader would do um, in opposition to smaller triangles, which get sent over to a dedicated like one thread per triangle thing, because it turns out that's faster. So I've just laid it all out there. And the reason I'm saying that is this is there's going to be a lot of videos. There's going to be a lot of videos and not all of them are going to have immediate results. But this is the goal. But I guess to give us something. So this isn't just me rambling and promising and promoting future videos. The fundamental concepts that I'm going to be laying out, at least over the next few videos, are descriptors. And the funny thing about descriptors in Vulkan is it feels like, okay, I understand them, I understand them, I'm working on them, and then suddenly there's a point where it's like, this is just one level of abstraction too much. So to address that up front, I'm going to lay out more or less the full descriptor model. So we've got shaders and shaders need to see resources like buffers, images, uh, matrices, whatever. These resources, they can't, you know, traditionally there would be uniforms in OpenGL, but we can't just sort of upload them from the CPU to the GPU and we're done, we need some sort of indirection, some sort of abstraction structure so that the GPU understands what they are. So imagine that we've got like a buffer or a texture or something. That resource has a descriptor. And 
what I've found is that on my graphics card, when I was doing OpenGL stuff, I would run into a limitation on the number of uniforms that I could bind, the number of bind points that I could use. And this is just a hardware limitation. But there's a funny thing about the hardware limitation is that in Vulkan, there's something called a descriptor set. So a descriptor set is another abstraction object which wraps up a bunch of descriptors. And this is a way that we can get around hardware limitations on the number of things that can be bound. So let's say that we've got like an image, a texture, a storage buffer, some other stuff, and we're sort of binding all these things at once. So all these things can be put in one descriptor set. So all those descriptors are in a descriptor set, and that is counting as one binding, quote unquote binding. In addition to that, several descriptor sets can be bound on the GPU. So we have descriptors, descriptor sets, and then we also have descriptor set layouts. Now the descriptor set layout is abstractly describing the general shape of a descriptor set. So the descriptor set layout, like I said, is a general shape. It's saying, hey, this is a descriptor set. It is expecting to contain these sorts of resources. Whereas a descriptor set is, this is a descriptor set, and these are the specific resources which are bound in that descriptor set. So when we create a shader, we need to tell that shader which sorts of resources to expect. And the way we do that is we describe a descriptor set layout. Now I'll get back to what I was saying, which is there's a level on top of that, which is the pipeline layout. Now with the pipeline layout, pipelines can have multiple descriptor sets. But when we take a descriptor set and throw it at a pipeline, we need to know which descriptor sets are in the pipeline. Look, I really hope this makes sense. I swear, I'm not punking you. I'm not trolling you. This is really how this stuff is written. Ah, the reason for this, okay, the reason for this is that in the shader, you have like descriptor set zero, descriptor set one, descriptor set two, but there's no other semantic meaning for that. So when we're on a command buffer and we're throwing in a descriptor set, we need to give it some sort of way of associating an index to the descriptor set which is being put in. Look, I really hope this makes sense. It might make more sense when I go code it up, but I just wanted to talk about sort of briefly what I'm working on. And if this, this speech of mine sounded confusing, well then now you understand the frustration that I've been through the past day and a half sort of coding all of this up. But in short, Vulcan content is coming. Some of these videos are going to feel like they have low payoff in the sense that we're not going to see something immediately, but where it's going, I hope will be very interesting. I'm going to be busting out. Remember I did a series on software rendering. I had a lot of fun with that series. I, I solved a lot of like quote unquote intellectually hard problems. So I'm going to bring all of my experience with software rendering to bear on this problem. I'm going to put the best explanations into it that I can. And I hope to see you guys there. I'm going to hang up now, drink my Mandarin Americano and start preparing videos. Hey, so I was about to edit this video, but then I remembered I've got new Patreon supporters. So really big thank you to all of my channel supporters. Um, if you would like to support me, it's just $2.50 a month, but um, if you'd like to give more, I won't say no. So without further ado, a really big thank you to Antonin Caret, Dank Your Falls, Declan, Andalon Studios, Catania, Gary Deschen, Jean Valsvilla, Lane Duhit, Mathieu de Rick, and Moim. Thank you so much, my dudes. Making high quality videos takes time, and I guess it takes even less time when I go on random tangents and deep dives. But 
thank you so much. It really does mean a lot. I know I just complained about a Mandarin Americano, but having that little extra bit to uh, buy coffee, it really does make a difference. I'm looking so tired at the moment. Ah, okay. But thank you, really, truly. Um, it means a lot. Um, I hope things are going well. And yeah, have a good one. Bye.